Hello, my friends. Assalamu alaikum. It was indeed a good exposure of the topic by Mr. Mara, <coughs> Ranjit Mara. I share some of his concern, which he expressed at the end of his speech. The first one is that the state is going to wither away. The second concern that he raised is that the silent majority remains silent. And unless you make them awake, the nation is going to be in peril. I rather share these two opinions of Mr. Ranjit Mara, and I feel and I say and I express my opinion that that it is high time that we take this discussion among the majority community, the community which is sleeping, rather than taking these issues to the minority which is now seen very much in the street and by their dress you can identify who creates problem in the nation. The statement of the Prime Minister identifying who are the troublemakers by looking at the dress is the most unfortunate statement one could have expect from a person holding the highest post of this under the constitution. Tomorrow, if a policeman comes and say, what made you to have this lati charge on this man, he would say, my prime minister has told, identify the violator by the dress. You have given a clean sheet to the law enforcing agencies that if you do lati charge, this is the standard that you should have. Very dangerous, highly dangerous, highly volatile. Look, unfortunately the trend, the trend in the society now is that as if this act, Citizens Amendment Act, is something that affects only the Muslim community. Quite unfortunate. It is not affecting the Muslim community alone. By and large, I would rather say it is aimed against the majority community. Why it is against, against the majority community? Who constitutes the majority community in, 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 in major chunk? The socially and backward class. When you say the majority community, when you say the Hindus, mostly the Hindus by and large are socially and educationally backward. Why? The scheduled caste, the scheduled tribe. The, the poor, the poor, I mean the people who have been divided in that fashion, the Iravas, and many, many. Now what is going to happen to all these people? Forget about this, what you call, citizen summon and act for a while. Just imagine tomorrow when this registered national citizen's register is being prepared you are going to make an application to get registered as a citizen of this country. Over the 70 years or 50 years or 40 years, when you claimed, when you become, when you proclaimed as a proud international, one fine morning you are asked by the government, prove your citizenship. Which government is asking you? The very same government whom you elected. What is the sin you have done against them for asking you to prove your local standing? We elected a government and the elected the government is coming and asking you that I want you to prove your citizenship. Look, what is the situation that to which we are put in? Don't you feel insulted? 
Don't you, are you not ashamed of this government? What is that, what is that courage which gives them to tell you to prove the uh, citizenship? Have they, any one of them in the government, after proving citizenship, been elected? Why such questions are not being asked? But the questions are asked in a different tangent. They are asking the question that, look, the community, the nation is being divided by the minorities and they are, they are spreading venom nuisance in, across the country. Because what guides them is not the philosophy of Indian idealism in constitutional idea. And he very clearly portrayed what gave them is the philosophy of Veer Savarkar. And that is why symbolically they shot Mahatma Gandhi and made God say the Mahatma. What action being taken by the government? Had it been done by any, any other person not having allegiance to the RSS? If a Mahatma Gandhi's picture is put and shot, shot him dead, what, where will his stand be? He will be counting the grills. This standard. So we are, we know, nobody needs to tell us now that what, who, 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 what is the philosophy of this government? Now, I'm sorry, how are you we going to awake the majority? See, tomorrow, when I am asked to prove, I as a Hindu, I am not a Muslim, I as a Hindu, lived in this country, born in this country, my parents were Hindus, I am asked to prove my identity. I go with all the certificates before the registering authority and they say, look, a birth certificate spelling and address is different from your spelling in the school certificate and the addresses. We had our address when schooling at some elsewhere. My father shifted my home to another place and we have another addresses. So these addresses can never be matched. And my address in the marriage will be different. And my spelling in the spelling of my name and address will be different because we go by acts, not, not by strictly scrutinizing each spellings in each documents. As a lawyer over the past 35 years, I know I have not come across even a single client till today without having his name differently spelled in different documents. Now, when you go with all this certificate, we think that I have a ration card, I have Aadhaar, I have passport, I have birth certificate, I have marriage certificate, and I have what not. And take, go to your home, take out all the certificates, your SSL and everything, see the spellings of your home address, see the spellings of your name, your father's name, your mother's name. And see where are the, where, where, what are the changes that you have made in the addresses from one place to the other. And you will know then, you will have to stand in the queue of every officer for months together for correction of this document. And with all this correction of this document, when you go there, you will still be said, when did you, have, where, who is your father, so and so? Where is his birth certificate? Unless you prove that his birth is an Indian, how can you claim as a descendant? Things like that is going to trouble not the rich, not the cream of this country. Things of this kind is going to trouble the poorest of the poor, the, the homeless people, the persons who the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribe, and those ordinary person who has never taken care of this, these small things. These are not small things, but this becomes very important things. And those people will have to now stand in the queue as you have seen during demonetization time. Who will stand? If they stand for a day, they will, they will be starving at home. They don't have much income. They don't have bank balances. 
to to lay for their life one day two day three day one month the whole family will starve and yet another aspect you must understand that is so far as a woman is concerned a woman has different addresses before the marriage the father's name will be there after the marriage husband's father will be there in the baptism certificate a different name in the marriage certificate a different name no okay the hindus the sikhs the buddhists the, the christians everyone when say fail look you are not a citizen but as a charity as a charity i will give you the citizenship so you become a second class citizen earlier you were a first class citizen from your status from a first class to a second class now are you going to be proud of india are you going to be proud of the nation in which you born my dear there are many many questions to be asked and these questions are to be asked not to the minorities these questions are to be asked to the majority you know what is going to happen to all these people when you get a second grade stand citizenship you are claim for reservation you are claim for a scheduled caste status uh, status for a reservation goes because what is given to you is a charity you have no bargaining power so the who is going to run the country the savarnas so there is subjugated majority community in the majority uh, uh, society i'm sorry is going to suffer it is this message that should go into the people and these meetings i would rather say not to be held much in the muslim community don't flare up the, this this fire in the muslim community this message must go to the poorest to the poor people <coughs> if we succeed in that then alone this fight will go and have its object have its its ultimate success other way is you people will create some problem and as he's pointed out it's not too far to declare an emergency it's not too far to declare an emergency and what is the excuse for an emergency they would say the muslims made the nation to flare up our communal ground law and order situation has broken down the military must, must come and with the military is coming not the majority community is going to be grilled all the topi walas will be grilled and these topi walas will be grilled and the community will be left without anyone to be looked after and very easy way to the to the dream to come true that of the veer sarwarkar so beware beware of these things with this small uh, comments on this uh, today's topic uh, i end my uh, small this thing i'm sorry if i have exceeded my time uh, but i was little rather uh, uh, provoked by mr ranjit mara about his apprehensions and concerns which he expressed at the end of it and uh, i must thank him for this exposure